And here we go to the top left. He might have already thought that he is out of luck, but he has another chance of forcing another tiebreaker. It is the MVP Prodos. It is MVP Vampire. MVP Vampire. In the group earlier, he won against Supernova. Can he do it again? Our Terran player, with a win over Creator, brought himself into a position where he can advance to Code S. He would be the second Terran player to advance out of this group. It is the Terran player starting for MTW. It is... MTW Supernova! What a crazy situation, man. Supernova, one win away from taking that Codest spot away from the other two players. And with a win like the one we saw in the last game, I would say he certainly deserves it, but he's gonna have to prove it still. Well, the thing is, all of them deserve it. It's really hard to uh, tell who you want to advance. Of course, the WCS champion not being in Codest would be uh, uh, weird. It would be certainly weird, man. But Supernova, for example, and Vampire as well, they played great today. And Supernova is not taking his gas. He will expand at least before he starts any sort of siege tank production. Uh, and Vampire back at home has skipped gas 100%. Is just going for his pylon now. There's the gas, very late gas, but he's got a lot of extra minerals as a result. We'll be able to double gas here. So he's gonna be doing the 2-2 double gas. I feel that Vampire is a little bit at a disadvantage here, but just because Supernova is a much more experienced player and dealing with a situation like this is never easy. There's so much pressure, there is so much, that's such a burden that lasts let, on your shoulders. Let me tell you something, man, that last game, I don't know if anyone but Supernova could have pulled out a win there. That was insane, making every possible right choice when it mattered, and he had to make about 20 of those game-ending choices if you get yeah. it wrong. You know, this tipping point that we saw when this fight at the natural of Supernova occurred, it looked like for so long that, that, we, that we would just see Creator crush through him. And then suddenly Supernova was able to slowly but steadily turn the tides and force him back. Yeah. And you know what? All because he was able to take down the robotic space. Yeah, and you know, this is, uh, this is so, you're so right. Another thing to note is Supernova, how many times he pulled his SCVs during that fight? Like three. He pulled them, sent them back to mine, pulled them, sent them back to mine. He changed how many SCVs were fighting. He just knew exactly how to make sure he maximized the damage, but also keep the SCVs there for buffering. Crazy, crazy game, and Supernova, man, he's double gassing. I think he wants to make some siege tanks, maybe. Yeah, just maybe. Maybe he's going for the same strategy again. But remember, Vampire was the one Protoss player who crushed this attack earlier. Yeah. He was able, even though he was at a huge disadvantage of the Supernova when for all this harassment, he crushed the attack of the Terran player and was able to force him back. It was really well done. Can he do it again? Such a cool scout here by Supernova as well. Knows the Nexus timing, sees the double gases are being mined still by two harvesters. Did not uh, be, he was not able to go back and see the Nexus, but he can assume. Factory is on the way. This is a map where many Pros players have been killed by the Siege Tank push. MVP, for example, notably taking out, I believe, Parting uh, in the season where he faced Squirtle in the finals. That's such a great point because it's not about the strategy that Supernova played so far where he really relied on Siege Tanks and moved forward. But this is a map where we've seen this over and over again just because how the map works. You have at the natural a position where you can just uh, use on the low ground your Siege Tanks and slowly but steadily just edge forward and then you find yourself in an awesome spot where the t Siege Tanks really can show their potential. We have an SCV hit, uh, sorry, one SCV hit to the left side of the map, by the way. I think he may, yep, oh, there's a star point, I think he may go for a similar drop play as what we saw last game. I mean, clearly, no matter what the situation, he seems to be able to make it work. So, going for this again would be a cool idea, but he is getting a tech up on the factory, so we're going to see Siege Tanks at the very least. He may just rally Banshees from there, and do that same push just with a faster rally, more Banshees, or potentially even a Raven. That's something we've seen him really like to add to the composition as well. There's the first Siege Tank. There it is, and Vampire, of course. He has this robotics, he has the Observer, and he will know what's going on. He has rallied it all across the map. The second one is on its way, and here we have the Tech Lab. The Tech Lab for Supernova Starport. This is going to be most likely a Banshee, might be a Raven. Uh, now, consider that Vampire is going for really fast robotic support, which is exactly what you want to have against this type of push, because you're going to need something to do damage to the Marines. Cloak is on the way. But with only one observer on the map, no, he made a second one, it just popped out. So he's got two observers, but they've got to be with his army for him to be able to utilize that. 
this is going to be uh, something he does not expect because he's going to get into the main base of Supernova. He's going to see no starport. He's going to think to himself, well, this is pretty normal. Supernova likes to cut starports out and add extra barracks after he gets his siege tanks out. He just likes to keep siege tanks as part of his bio composition. So he's going to be thinking to himself, where are the eBays, though? And he, if he goes to check for the starport, oh that wow, he's actually decision. spotted, and the observer is taken out. This could be a, a huge problem for him, especially because now he needs to use the second observer to move in, which means that it's completely out of position for this banshee. When this banshee attacks, there is not going to be an observer at all. So if cloak is already done, yeah, and it's like, well, do you cancel a colossus to get an observer out faster? He actually no. Wait a second. He waits with his banshee. He's waiting for cloak. Yes, he waits for Cloak and maybe even for the second one before he moves in. And if he fights against the Colossus with his tanks where there's no Observer, if he just attacks the Colossus instead of going for Harvesters with two Banshees, that could be game ending. He moves in. He does not wait for the second Banshee. And the Immortal is a little bit exposed here right now. Ah, uh -uh. uh, traps the Marines. Oh, he's going to use a lot of Force Fields. Meanwhile, the Banshees, though, where are they? The Banshee is in the main base already. There it is. It's, it's, it's killing away a probes. Taking down the first few, but well, one thing that Super uh, that Vampire showed earlier is that he certainly knows how to make up for lost probes, but he needs an observer. There's the observer. The Colossus was just done in time. Yeah, and now uh, what's he going to do with the Banshee? He decides not to fight the Colossus, just damages. Now the sentries, he's going for the sentries. He can actually take them down. And but Supernova is not going to hit the timing. He's just going to transition to a normal game. He's forced his opponent to lose so much mining now. Starting Stim. Oh, plus Supernova one. doesn't get it, Wolf. He didn't realize that there is no observer. He did not kill the uh, the sentries. He could have done so, but he was a little bit too afraid. 11 workers killed already. 13, 14, even more. 15. Another one dies. He is taking down so many of them again. Oh. And Supernova's Banshees fly away to, to live another day. Double barracks being added. Vampire now in an awkward position because he's down in Harvesters, but he has the better tech. Upgrades are going to be behind for a little while. And I would say this game is pretty even, but I would give a slight edge to Supernova considering the damage he's done here. Yeah, and of course, with the Harvest account that we have, 47 against 37 and the additional mules, this is definitely a good position for Supernova at this point in time. Time working in his favor. The army supply right now is the same. This is tense. Banshee's coming back in to the right side. There is an observer pinned on it immediately, though. He has to be really careful that he doesn't lose additional harvesters. He's already behind as it is, so you don't want to lose more workers and be way behind in economy against your opponent. But Supernova, is he committing to this? Is he going for this attack, or will he fall back onto a three-base style this time? So we're all waiting to see. Vampire adds three gates. He could try to hit a similar timing to what we saw with Creator. He did not start range yet, though. Very annoying Banshee here controlling the Watchtower. Yeah, the Banshee definitely be a problem for him. Ten kills on the one that we just saw. Plus one, plus one is nearly done. Stim, on the other hand, about to finish, as is Combat Shield. And here comes, at the left side, once again into the main base. Yeah, another Banshee. He's got Stalkers ready, Cloak is, is out. Uh, Second Banshee went home to repair. She has six kills and she's going in for a second pass. The problem is he's now got observers on both sides. So, except for the watchtower, there's no way for Supernova to do Look at the army supply, 42 against 72. And now with the superior economy that Supernova had, he's just paying it very pay, uh, playing it very patient. And it's now in such a huge lead when it comes down to his army supply. Uh, and Vampire needs to start 2-2. There he does. But right now, he is ahead in upgrades with 1-1 versus just plus 1 for Supernova. Upgrades are definitely going to be an issue later on. Yeah, that's the one advantage that he has. And it's ironic because that's kind of the opposite situation as to what we saw last game. Supernova being the player with the better upgrades who was able to win out. Composition-wise, uh, it's arguable that Supernova is also ahead here since he's already started to add the Vikings in. Three at a time being made, so he's ready for the Colossi. But the switch will be made. Templar Archives is done. He's only got two Colossi. He didn't spend the gas on the range upgrade. Exactly. Range something that he does not have. And moving out, the, the move out has already been spotted. That cannons in order to make sure that those Banshees cannot go in and take down additional workers. This is the worst nightmare for Vampire. He sees a third base with his Observer. How does he respond to this while also trying to deal with the Banshee that's forced his probes off the line one more time? This is so annoying for him. Yeah, you're right. 18 workers killed now and this Banshee really paid off for Supernova. He's actually moving into the main base now once again and takes down additional harvesters. If Vampire is not finally putting a stop to this, 
I don't know, but recovering from it is gonna be uh, uh, pretty tough as it is. But if he's not finally starting to take down those banshees, he is finding himself in an unwinnable position. Yeah, well, he may already be in that game. Oh, even using a feedback here. <laughs> and still the banshee survives. Oh, wow, that's... The only thing he's got going for him is upgrades. His economy is behind. His tech is behind. He doesn't have Storm. He doesn't even have the idea of a third Nexus. Somewhere this in the studio, Creator is looking with sad eyes at the screen and watching this game. Yep. In 124 fact. army supply against 75 and Supernova. He decided that it is time. It is time to move out and show Vampire who's boss. Two, two upgrades finishing for Vampire, but even on open ground, he cannot hope to fight this. Will he be able to pull off a miracle again? Will he be able to move on a comeback? It doesn't look like it. Those Vikings work hard at the Colossi, and they are gone. Stim has been used, and now Vampire is dropping in supply. He's 15 down. So much DPS. The Vikings are landed. The mules are dropped. Supernova is going to code S. He rips through the stalkers. GG. Vampire loses. Creator and Vampire. They are defeated. It is Supernova, the second Terra player, who advances to code S today next to Happy. Congratulations to the MTW Terran. Wow. Great play. Supernova will move on, but despite this being a group dominated by Protoss, two Terrans advance. Really well played here by Supernova, a crazy comeback against Creator. The Prime player had it in his own hands to advance, but in the last second it was so Supernova killing the robotic spake, cancelling the range upgrade and making sure that the attack of the Creator was not as strong as it could have been. Supernova coming back into the match, taking the game, forcing this game against Vampire and taking down the second Protoss player. Very well done today, congratulations once again. What an insane, epic day of matches, going all the way to the tiebreaker. Supernova really pulling through for yeah. MTW here. Getting that code S spot, well deserved, well played. You know, just sticking with his gun, sticking with his style. Just starting with Siege Tanks, transitioning every single game. What a sick day today, so many games. We had 18 matches today. And, uh, well, now we have two Terran players advancing, but of course, guys, this is not the end of the up and downs. We had a problem just, was it two days ago? It was yesterday, wasn't it? Yeah, yesterday there was already, no matches. I'm already losing track of time. Yeah, no matches yesterday because of the Typhoon. A lot of uh, players could not be here at the studio because they were still stuck in the US. So we have a double day tomorrow, but before we show you those games, we are having a quick look at today's results. Yeah, today's results, obviously, so you guys can see how it was played out. Supernova 5-2, happy 4-1, and that is how the cookie crumbles. And Killer not winning a single game today. Actually 0-5, yeah, not only 0-4. Yeah. Really unfortunate for him, a little bit disappointing. These are today's games indeed. And uh, I guess we'll have a look at what's happening tomorrow as well. Two groups tomorrow. Here we are at 1 p.m. We have uh, Oz, we have Ryang uh, live. Yes, C and Violet. Yeah. And tomorrow night, starting at 6.10, our normal time, which is, of course, five hours later. We have the last group. It's going to be Group F. The Suo Shin. Group C, actually. Oh, I'm sorry, yeah, because it's the group that was yeah. switched. Alive, Maru, Hero, and Shine. Here they are. Maru, someone that we haven't seen in quite a while. Is he ready? Is he prepared? And Shine and Alive, ladies and gentlemen, this is going to be an intense day. Two groups with five players each. Yep. What a what a day. Yeah. And tomorrow is just going to be. Just imagine today times two. Exactly uh, the same stuff that we had today, just twice the amount. The ladies, we are of course just. Calling it a day for now because we are heading home. It's pretty late in Korea. It's actually half past 11 already. I hope that you enjoyed today's show. We will be back tomorrow earlier than today. Get some popcorn, get a beer, get some coke. I don't know what you guys usually eat and drink when you're watching StarCraft 2. But you can watch the entire night tomorrow, the entire day. Get the GSL with the up and downs. See you tomorrow.